Hi, you're watching This Brand Geek and today I want to talk about Virgin Media. I am so sick of Virgin Media and I know it seems a bit much to be making a video about them. You don't understand how bad it's been. Now I joined Virgin Media about five years ago, six years ago. One of the reasons we bought this property is because it could get Virgin Media. That's how sad I am because the place I used to live in didn't have high speed internet. We would get 20 megs if I was lucky and that was on a good day and my upload speed was 0.8 megs. It used to take me like six hours to upload a video. Oh man, like it, it was bad. Anyways, so when we were looking for a place to live, I wouldn't even go to the viewing unless they gave me the full address first so I could check if it could get high speed internet. The only high speed internet really at that time in these areas was Virgin Media. So. I checked, it could get Virgin Media. At the time it was 350 megabits per second, which was amazing. And we got it and it was great for the first few weeks. And then it started to go downhill and it went downhill quickly. And I noticed that Virgin Media was going down at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. Oh man, that was rough. Anyways, it all got worse when the pandemic happened and everyone was working from home. And I, at the time, I was a fiber access network planner for British Telecom. I don't work for them now, so it's not like I'm, I'm ragging on Virgin Media because I work for BT, because I don't work for BT anymore and I don't really have a high opinion of them either right now. In my opinion, they both suck. At least BT's network is reliable though. The way they treat, hmm, should I even say this? I don't agree with how BT treats their employees and that's, that's how I'll, I'll leave it. I won't say any more than that. That's another topic. I don't even know if I'll make a video about that one day. Subscribe and find out. Anyways, Virgin Media, it got so bad that I had to go and get a separate broadband line. So Virgin Media has their own network and it's usually served underground. And this other network is served over the BT phone lines because BT had to open up their network to competitors because BT was a monopoly. So we had to let everyone else use our network. That's a whole thing as well. Anyway, so I went with Vodafone Broadband and with them, I was getting about 70 megabits per second down. The upload speed was 20, I think. And with Virgin, it was 100 megabits per second upload, 350 down. But the thing is, because Virgin was so unreliable, I have two broadband connections. So Virgin coming underground and the other one being served via a, a drop cable, like a normal phone line. So I had like this whole device where it would fail over. So it was, it was by Ubiquiti and uh, Virgin and the other one would be plugged in there and then it would monitor both broadband lines. And then if Virgin went down, it would shift my whole entire network over to the backup broadband, including my Wi-Fi and Ethernet and everything. And it would keep an eye on the Virgin line. And when that came back up, it would shift everything back over. And then the other one would just kind of go into a failover state again and just wait for Virgin to die again. The fact that I've been paying for two broadband providers for five years, six years, is not okay. Now, most people will say, well, why didn't, why didn't you just cancel Virgin then, you weirdo, and just stick with the other one? It's because I'm a freaking freak. If Virgin's offering 350 megabits per second, I'm gonna take it as opposed to 70 or something from someone else. The other thing is in the last six years, I upgraded version from 350 megabits per second to their gig one service, which is full gigabit. So it's a thousand megabits per second. And the upload speed on that was 150, I think. Yeah, it was 150. So a thousand down, 150 up. The thousand wasn't even a thousand. It was more like 1150 down, uh, which was great. But again, it was so unreliable. I went through three hubs. Uh, I've, now I've got their other hub, the slim new one, which is made for gig one and it's meant to be more reliable. Fun fact, I don't think it is. But the reason I'm making this video now is because I think I'm finally leaving Virgin. In this area now, you can get gigab, well, 900 megs. Why 900? Why can't you just make it a gig and then tell, and then sell it, why, why not? Anyways, you can get 900 through another provider, but something else happened, something awesome, something unthinkable. Community Fiber, which is, uh, an ISP in London, they decided to expand. They expanded aggressively and they expanded so aggressively they ended up in my area. So I'm like outer London. And they offer gigabit broadband, it's full fiber to the home, so it's fiber drop cable. They offer a thousand megabits per second down, a thousand up. So it's symmetrical, it's not even a thousand and a hundred. It's a thousand down and a thousand up. But then they also offer another service, which is three thousand down and three thousand up three gigabits per second down and up, fiber to the home, and it's cheaper than Virgin. Virgin I was paying 65 pounds a month. Community fiber for their gig broadband for a thousand down, a thousand up is 25 a month, which is insane. 
and for the three gigabit broadband it's 50 a month but the thing is my internal network is gigabit because all of my switches are gigabit so of course me being me i went for the three gigabit and upgraded all my switches to two and a half gig switches with like a 10 gig sfp port so i now have community fiber fiber to the home three gigabits per second download and upload which leaves me in a bit of a situation now because i still have virgin and vodafone so i have community fiber virgin and vodafone i'm paying for three broadband services right now and i only really need one or maybe two because i I'm, I'm weird and i don't if my internet goes down i might as well just not exist i'm a connected being i need the internet and seeing as i'm full-time youtube now and I do want to stream at some point, like stream events and stuff. I'm not Twitch streaming again, probably not anyways. If I do stream stuff like that again, it'll be on YouTube. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. I still need two connections. So what do I do? Do I keep Community Fiber and Virgin or Community Fiber and someone like Vodafone? The drawback to keeping someone like Vodafone is that it's served off the same pole. And that's an issue because I enjoy the separacy and businesses pay a lot for that. Resilience option two. If you know, you know. But businesses pay a lot for separacy and separacy is when your connections are served in two totally different ways and they come from two different directions and stuff. So having Virgin be provided underground and then have community fiber as a fiber drop cable from the pole, they're very separate. So if one goes down, chances are the other one won't unless community fiber goes down at some point and Virgin is just down because that's what Virgin's good at. So I don't know if I'll keep Virgin or Vodafone. I'll let you know in another video. But this video is about Virgin Media and whether or not you should subscribe to Virgin Media. Now, if they're your only choice, obviously you, you have no choice. Go with Virgin Media and pray every day. Downloading now. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Like religiously, especially if you go for Virgin TV, which is served over the same connection. I don't know why people do that. Why do people get a broadband line and then have their TV come through it? Because when your broadband goes down, you lose TV as well. Why? I know Sky in the UK is also kind of going that way where they want to provide Sky services over your broadband line, Sky Stream or whatever it's called. It's all through a broadband connection and they want to do away with their satellite dishes, which I'm totally against. Because if your broadband goes down, your TV goes down. And that's the good thing about Sky is that when your broadband goes down, your TV doesn't go down. God, I'm going off on another tangent. This is why I need to script videos more. Virgin Media, if they're your only choice, obviously go for them, pray. If they're not your only choice and you can get something else through the BT network, I'm not saying go with BT, go with whoever, but it's provided on like the BT network. Go with someone else but just check their reviews and stuff. Plusnet, who are owned by BT, they're pretty good. Vodafone, to be fair to them, have been good. Their customer service sucks. Honestly, when Virgin Media's gone down, Vodafone's been there to pick up the slack, so I can't really judge them too harshly. Vodafone's been great. EE, another one, I think they've, they're pretty good from what I hear. But anyways, Virgin Media, I will go as far as saying, in my opinion, in my opinion, don't sue me, bro. I would go as far as saying for residential broadband, Virgin Media is probably your worst choice when it comes to reliability and perhaps customer service because their customer service is shocking. Every time you tweet at them, the first thing they'll do is say, have you been on our network checking the thing to see if we're down in your area? Sometimes their network checking thing on their website doesn't even work or it says everything's fine, but then your connection's still messed up. It's a minefield. And when you talk to them on the phone, honestly, it's, it's just bad. It's bad. It is so bad that I had to write to their CEO a few times just to get someone to listen and fix the connection. It's extremely stressful. And another thing that they do, which is really weird, is you know when everyone was working from home during the pandemic? Well, they would plan network um, upgrades and stuff. I don't know why they call them network. I would, they, you'd get an email saying, we're improving in your area. You're going to be down for half the day on Friday afternoon. And it's like, what? I work from home and you're going down at 12 noon on Friday. What, what am I supposed to do? Like tether to my phone? They've been so bad. And I think I'm convincing myself to cancel them altogether. I might, I'm not gonna keep their gig one broadband. I might drop it down to a hundred megs or something and have that as the backup just because it's full separacy from the telephone pole outside where the fiber drop cable comes in for community fiber. 
just so I can have that separacy and peace of mind. But honestly, they've been bad. Some of you might have had a great experience with them. I mean, some people swear by them, but honestly, if you go online and just look at their Twitter or X, it's been so bad and people complain all the time and they keep upgrading their network and every time they upgrade their network, it just seems to get worse. So I, I don't know what the hell they're doing. So in a nutshell, if you have a chance to get Virgin Media Broadband and they're not your only option, I suggest that you don't get them. Sorry, Virgin. Someone had to say it. And now I've got Community Fibre, so I don't really have to be nice to you anymore. Um, <laughs> I will be reviewing Community Fibre as well. So far, fingers crossed, the connection's been solid. And as soon as I stop filming, it'll probably go down. But so far, it's been great. There were some teething issues at the start. And one thing that I will say about Community Fibre is because they're so small and they're growing so rapidly, their customer service can't keep up with their growth. Sometimes you call them and you think, are you even a real company? But honestly, their broadband so far has been amazing. Speed tests wise, it, it's been awesome. I'll throw up some speed tests on the screen right now for Community Fibre. Um, you'll notice that it's just under two and a half thousand megabits per second. That's because my internal network is two and a half thousand megabits per second. If I was to run two separate speed tests on two separate switches, it would be the full 3000, just so you know. I am actually getting 3000 down, 3000 up. With Virgin, I'm getting 1150 down or 1130 down and about 150 up. Uh, Vodafone is not really worth talking about. It's basic, 70 down, whatever, 20 up, whatever it was, I don't know. But yeah, this is just a PSA and a short review for Virgin Media. When it works, it's awesome. But in my opinion and in my experience, it doesn't work that well. It goes down at least twice or three times a month. They can't fix their network, even though they're constantly upgrading it. I don't know what the heck is going on and I can't recommend them. And with that, this video is coming to an end. I know you're all set to see me go, but if you want to see more of me, subscribe now. I'm making plenty of videos from now going forward. I know I've said that before, but I mean it now. I mean, I've spent so much money on this studio. I need to use it. I'm covering the iPhone 15 event or the Apple event on September 12th. So there'll be videos leading up to that. And then I'll cover the event itself and then get the phone and review it and stuff. Like this video if you found it informative and please also consider subscribing as well. You've been watching This Brand Geek. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.